Hello and welcome back to Space Ancient Days. In today's video, we're looking at another small block utility ship that did catch me off guard when I first downloaded it and took a look around it. So this is a Sphinx light utility ship, which is this lovely thing that I'm currently driving. So this features two assault cannons to blast your enemies with, we've got a bunch of warhead batteries to give it a nice bit of power, we've got both hydrogen and ion thrusters to push you around, and then we have this rather odd part at the front, where as you can see we've got slightly raised up magnetic plays that come all the way across past these hydrogen tanks that allow you to connect up to say a large container onto a wreckage or even some warheads to carry around and drop off where they need to go. In fact speaking of warheads you can just attach them on there, fly at high speeds towards your enemies, let them go, pull away and hopefully they'll hit the target. Yes it's a rather interesting setup ship where you can easily connect up what you actually want to drag around from first person view so looking all the way down from the cockpit you can easily see where those magnetic plates are sitting, what you're connecting up to, if there's any risk of you damaging this thing, it's all perfectly set up to handle that. Anyway back into third person view, coming like this, pressing F10, finding its form menu, the Sphinx light utility ship is 357 small blocks using the decorative block Warfare 2 Heavy Industry and Wasteland DLC pack. We got no information whatsoever, so we simply give this a thumbs up, move around towards the very front, have a quick look around the outside, then go and drive around for a bit, maybe attach some warheads on there and fling them at some nearby pirates. So at the very front for these Sphinx, this is what we get, and it's an industrial cockpit to drive this thing around with some lovely bright blinding warfare lights to, well, light up the darkness. We can also see a bunch of ion and hydrogen thrusters to move us around, a large connector below our cockpit, then at the very front or left and right hand side we see some magnetic plates to connect up to what you want to transport and what I discussed at the very start of this video. If you move around onto the side here we go, what we'll see is a bunch of lovely beam locks just covering up the edges of where our hydrogen tanks are sitting to give you a nice lot of fuel to drive this around for a nice long time. As we have to move all the way along we we'll see some more hydrogen thrusters for our left and right as well as some nice use of our blaster edge blocks just acting as a bit of decoration. If we were to come around onto the side where those blocks are attached onto are some warfare batteries then we've got a couple more ion thrusters just to also help out on our left and right. Moving around towards the very back of this thing we can see a large ion thruster to give us a nice lot of speed, some more hydrogen tanks give us a nice lot of fuel, we've got two more small hydrogen thrusters to boost us around as well as two more small ion thrusters in addition to the big ones which like I said should give us a nice lot of speed. But there is a secondary connector to go and dock this up, load up with more hydrogen, load up with more ammunition for those assault cannons and there's an antenna to make sure you always find this thing. Moving all the way up and looking down we can see an ore detector so we can go out and about and scout for ore patches which is very nice stuff. There's some more iron thrusters to move us all the way down, in front of that is an O2H2 generator, there's a the warfare battery on the opposite side. Moving towards the front there, there's some lovely conveyors that go across to our cockpit to make sure everything's all connected up. There's some more hydrogen thrusters to help move us down, there's the top of our assault cannons and there's the very front where all our light is shining out towards the planet. Moving all the way down under this thing, there we go, go away. Very clear view of our hydrogen tanks which are below our guns, over there is a little searchlight just twiddling around, there's our other connector, then moving over to this section there's our auction tank, more ion thrusters, and at the very back there there's a medium cargo container which is attached onto our connector at the back. And there we go, that's a brief look around the Sphinx, and does look fantastic with how it's all being set up, it's got pretty much everything you need to survive in survival mode barring a survival kit, but you could if you really want to go and slap it on there, say replace one of the batteries on the side put that in that place, and well it might fit in there, it might not. But anyway grab me hold my character, it's now time to go through the controls, so over to tab number 1, and well first of all looking around here, this is all we can see, clear view our guns on this side, looking down there, clear view our magnetic plates when we clamp up the stuff, and a nice clear view all the way around the top. Yes for number 1, number 2 that's for our magnetic plates all the way around the ship, to unlock them and lock them, number 2 is then to turn them on and off in case you need to do that, Number 4 is a master toggle for your guns at the front to make sure you don't accidentally fire them, when you were to say come across to number 5, press that, nothing's going to happen until we turn them on, there we are. And of course because they are assault cannons when we fire them, they are going to move the vehicle slightly backwards. And there we are, that is that for the controls of the ship, it's a very simple thing, you could always add more controls onto this if you wanted to, without further ado it's time to drive this thing around, I think what we'll do is face towards this lovely section on this skybox which is a very very old skybox, this thing is almost 8 years old, in fact I think it's over 8 years old, so it was released in 2015. So moving forwards, this is what we get for the Sphinx, and as you expect we've got a nice lot of speed thanks to our thrusters at the back, and due to how small and light we are at the end of the day. Coming to a stop we are a little bit slower but luckily we do have plenty of gyroscope controls to do 180 to solve ourselves a lot quicker. Moving left, 
and move right. A nice little speed with that. Moving down, feels a little slower than moving left and right, and then moving up, also feels a bit slower than left and right. Quite odd. There we go, moving left, coming to a stop, moving up. Yeah, it does feel a little bit slower. Then of course, as the gyroscope controls, as I said, got a nice little control over this, so actually moving this thing around <laughs> Quite nauseating to do with the sunlight reflecting on there. But yes, as I was saying, there's plenty of control over this. There's basically no weight whatsoever, so if you wanted to, you could always turn it down a little bit. But if you are going to be connecting up those front magnetic plates onto cargo to drag around, having it very floaty is going to be very good, just in case you are lifting up something that's extremely heavy. Now, you won't be able to do that on a planet. This is going to be strictly in space. As you can see, moving up, we are quite slow, so that's not going to be too good on a planet with high gravity. As for that, that's pretty much it for this video. The only thing I can think of doing is of course do what I said at the start of the video, and that's attach on some warheads to the front there, then go and fling them at some nearby pirates if they decide to spawn. And here we are, what I've done is found myself a space pirate wreckage, which is sitting 1.7 kilometers away. If we were to come to the camera that I attach onto the ship, and there are the two warheads that are clamped onto the front there, which we're going to be flinging at them in just a second, but there they are, that is their wreckage of a ship, and now we're going to charge along here, and once we get up to maximum speed, what I'm going to do is waiting for about one kilometer out, they're going to release the warheads, pull away, and we'll try and follow it along and see what kind of damage they can deal. So here we go, now going to unlock that, pulling away, off they go. And now we are successfully going to bomb them, hopefully, if they don't have any guns there and they don't insert the warheads. And there we go, that was actually a fantastic shot by me, I was expecting just to miss it completely. And, well, what was that wreckage is now completely deleted. And there we go. That's that for the Sphinx light utility ship. That works very well as a small little bombing ship if you want to do that. But yes, there's not too much else to talk about with this ship. Very self plan for what it does. Very useful ship at the end of the day. They can easily be refitted with stuff you need for survival mode. And of course, any other things you can think of. So there'll be a link to the description below to download and play around it yourself. Highly recommend you do. As well as a link to the Skybox I'm currently using. And I'll be back with another video sometime soon. Bye bye.